Hey everybody, this is Ryan of the Cold War Cast, and today I'm going to do a quick video and uh, review the book Fallout by Harry Turldove. Harry Turldove is um, a very good author. I've read a couple of his books over the years. Um, I know he's kind of got like a little bit of a cult-like status. Um, he's very well regarded, but um, I'm not quite one of those people, but everything I have read by him, I've been very impressed by. And what he is, is he's a guy that does um, alternative history. So, um, you know, you look at moments in history, well, what if it went this way? Or um, sometimes he does, I, I think you would call it historical fiction where he might take a, a character or a um, situation in history and write a fiction story around it. And they always turn out very good. The guy's an amazing author. And to do something like that, um, A, you need to have uh, a really good um, mind for history, of course, and uh, facts and uh you know, like a, a real right brain type of person, but you also have to be a real left brain type of person too, um, with imagination and creativity. And Turtle Dove definitely has both of them, as he's shown throughout his writing career. But anyway, this book Fallout um, takes place immediately after World War II. I think the timeline is 1950, 1951, somewhere like that. And basically, um, World War II doesn't really end it kind of turns into a showdown between the United States and Western powers versus the Soviet Union and um, so the Cold War turns hot um, and somewhere in between um, the end of the World War and where we're at in the book 1950 um, there's a an <coughs> excuse me an atomic exchange between the United States and the Soviet Union and now, at this point, the technology wasn't there to send um, ICBMs. So basically, everything had to be dropped from a plane. And the Russians managed to nuke several cities on the U.S. West Coast. Um, Los Angeles, um, Seattle, uh, I think there was a couple other. I don't remember if they got Portland or whatever. But um, they, they dropped a few bombs on us, and we dropped a few bombs on them, including Moscow. Um, there was ground fighting in Germany, basically, and, um, well, just kind of like what we really did after the Cold War, we kind of, uh, rearmed Germany a little bit, um, as a buffer against the Soviet Union, and that takes place in the book, too. And then there's also a Chinese-slash-North Korean attack on South Korea, which, of course, happened in real life, too. Um, the book... The format of it is it follows around a um, handful of characters uh, throughout the world. There's a um, German uh, resistance fighter, I suppose you would say, fighting against the Soviet Union, um, who's a veteran of World War II. Um, there is a guy that um, left the Soviet Union before World War II and lived in Harbin, China, um, after the Soviet Union and this uh, fictional Cold War, whatever, took over that part of China. And, and that one's kind of interesting. Nothing too exciting happens, but it's interesting um, tidbits of information and speculation that he puts out. Um, there's an American officer that's fighting in Korea. Um, an American woman that's putting her life together in the aftermath of the bomb um, on the West Coast. Um, and there's a German woman, the wife of the German fighter, that um, goes to a gulag in the Soviet Union. And that might be one of the more interesting ones. And there's also Harry S. Truman as a president. A um, couple Soviet uh, officers or whatever. So, you know, there's quite a few characters that bounces around. Um, now, as a book, it's entertaining. Um, it keeps you interested, but... In a way, it kind of goes nowhere. Um, there's not really a big um, climax, turning point, um, this or that. It just kind of bounces around from like story to story. And um, it's it's just like these people's existence within the um, World War Three or whatever it is at the moment. Um, so it definitely lacks in that department. Um, 
you know, like I think once I got to about halfway into the book and then um, about three-fourths of the way into it, I'm kind of like, okay, where where is this going? Um, towards the end, I guess it kind of has, or pretty much at the end, it has like an interesting twist or whatever, but I won't spoil that. And honestly, it's not enough to really um, make it a um, exciting, like, climax story you know, whatever, but, um, I don't know, it, it's kind of cool just at face value, I guess, and, um, Turtle Dove is a very smart guy, and he throws a lot of informa interesting information in there, too, which is interesting, but from the perspective of historical fiction, I think it fails, because, um, it, to be honest, it doesn't really seem all that different than, um, a lot that's already out there that is that did happen, I guess. Um, the German uh, wife that's in the gulag, um, you know, it's not that far from a, Stol a Solzhenitsyn novel. Um, obviously, the writing style is a little bit dif different, but just that inside look at the gulag, um, that's something that really happened. It wasn't like Turtle Dove made up the gulags for the sake of the story. Um, the American officer fighting Korea, that's... Uh, you know, not to say it's like a bad part of the story or something, but it's like, um, it, it just seems like you're reading about or hearing about <coughs> <coughs> the actual Korean War as it happened. Um, it's kind of hard to get away from that. Um, some of the fighting in Europe, the ground fighting, is um, basically like reading a World War II novel um, just with a couple little twists and turns and added technology so um oh yeah and then harry s truman one thing that he keeps talking about in there is um senator joe mccarthy of wisconsin a, a guy we will talk about in the podcast of course uh running for president and um it, it's kind of funny because to me it seems like there's parallels between like say like, what like obama would say about donald trump or whatever kind of like oh i can't believe this blowhard's like you know, whipping up everybody, and I, so I, that's just kind of a funny little parallel, I think, but it's still um, nothing compelling enough that uh, shows a lot of imagination, I guess, as far as um, uh, creating a world where the Cold War actually would have gone hot in 1950s. So it, it kind of fails in that department, but um, I don't know. It, it's an interesting read. If you don't have anything else on your reading list right now and um, you are interested in the Cold War, as I, I assume you are if you're watching this channel um, or, you know, my podcast at coldwarcast.com, uh, it, it might be of interest. Uh, for me, I picked it up at my library. They had the audio copy of it and um, just figured I would give it a shot because it Obviously, it looked like something I would be interested in, and it wasn't exactly a waste of time or anything, I don't think. Um, you know, like I said, it was a good story. It just um, fell a little short in the imagination department and um, didn't necessarily seem like something that uh, um, was this uh, exciting world that Turtle Dove created in his head of uh, a war that happened in 1950. Some of it, it just seemed like reading actual nonfiction uh, about the time, I guess, or, or I guess fiction about the time. So I will leave it there. Um, yeah, Fallout, uh, check it out if you want, I guess. But uh, I will be back later with uh, more little side videos of the Cold War. Thanks for watching.